Our laboratory is really interested in understanding how children's minds and brains grow and develop. The field has largely used this term, the 30 million word gap. And that comes out of research where researchers recorded home conversations between parents and children of various levels of family income and education. And they estimated or calculated that a child who arrives at the beginning of school, who comes from a high income, high education family, has heard 30 million more words spoken to him or her than a child who comes from a family with it, where there's lesser education and lesser income. So the question is why and what do we do about it? We know that the language exposure is contributing to the children's language abilities, but what is the mechanism underlying this input-output relationship? How is the language exposure translating into a language gap? And the second thing we were very interested in is, uh, although we know that this word gap is associated with family income, how close is that relationship? So we had to go look for lots of parents with kids uh, from a broad range and diverse backgrounds in terms of income and education at home and ask them to uh, wear a device at home so we could record the number of words that were spoken between parents and children as well as the number of conversational turns. We had a small fleet of audio recorders that children would actually wear in a shirt pocket and they would wear these from the time they woke up to the time they went to bed at night and then uh, we would use speech recognition algorithms to determine how much speech they had been hearing and how much speech they had been producing themselves and then how many back and forth turns they'd been taking with other conversational partners. And then the children came in, and this was the exotic part of the study, they went into an MRI scanner and we recorded their brains as they heard little stories that were spoken to them while their brains were being monitored through functional magnetic resonance imaging. Neuroimaging was pretty labor intensive as well. Working with children as young as four, um, it's very difficult to do MRI scans with them because they have to lie perfectly still so that we can get nice clear images. So I'm sitting next to our mock scanner. It's a wooden replica of what the MRI scanner actually looks like. And if they move too much, the motion sensitive camera will cut off their video. So it's kind of a, a conditioned training for these children to teach themselves to lie still while they're doing the imaging session. After we finished collecting all of the data, we were excited to look at how the home language experience related to the brain functions. And what we were surprised to find is that the number of adult words didn't seem to matter at all for the brain function. What mattered was the number of conversational turns. The part of the brain uh, that showed the biggest difference in relation to conversational turns at home is that one of the two major language areas of the brain, so it's called Broca's area. And what we saw was that the more these children uh, had conversational turns at home, the more this area was engaged as they heard stories spoken to them while we were imaging their brains. The second thing we were surprised by a little bit was that, uh, that, that it didn't matter the education or income level of the family. What mattered was how often these conversations turned back and forth. So we're taking these results as sort of a, a social optimism as, of sorts because socioeconomic status or SES is largely difficult to change, but a conversation with your child is something much more simple, much more malleable. So our, our next goal is to work on interventions that will help families have more of these conversations back and forth. Can we not only describe this relationship, but can we foster and enhance it so more parents are comfortable and supported in having these kinds of critical conversational turns with their children.